This Twit News is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Securing every access point in your company doesn't have to be a challenge. LastPass unifies access and authentication to make securing your employees simple and secure, even when they're working remotely. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twit News, episode 361, recorded Tuesday, September 1st, 2020. Samsung Unpacked, part two. This Twit News is brought to you by LastPass. Let LastPass improve your employees' experience while safeguarding your business from cyber threats. LastPass is the number one password manager. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. Hello, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Twit News. Today, we are here to talk a little bit about Samsung again. I'm Jason Howell and joining me this morning to talk about the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is my co-host from All About Android, Florence Ion. How you doing, Flo? I'm trying to just like force my body into, (laughs) woo, I'm up and I'm excited. (laughs) It just doesn't feel, I I don't know, for me, 7 a.m. is absolutely the the earliest I ever do any sort of podcasting. And I think that started last time Samsung had an event, not many weeks ago. So uh, it just, it doesn't feel natural. Not to me anyway. Yeah. 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 So it looks like the event is beginning. Now, what is this event? Well, Samsung had its unpacked uh, about a month ago where it actually announced, well, the Note less 20. Less than a month ago, actually. It was Ultra. Yeah. Right. It was, yeah, it was less than a month ago. Um, I have the Note 20 Ultra, so I've been playing around with that. I have a review on Hands on Tech if you want to check that out, twit.tv slash H-O-T. But during that announcement, they also did mention the Galaxy Z Fold 2. And uh, now they're holding an announcement to dive even deeper into the details because we don't know a whole lot about it. And it appears that we have already begun. Are you excited for this phone flow? Um, I am very interested to see what they're going to do for the second generation of this fold phone, this folding phone, I should say. Um, I'm very curious to see how they're going to get me excited about it. Um, And I think it's very interesting that they just jumped into it. We actually had a bit of of a delay in the last yeah. presentation, if I recall. They learned something. They learned a thing or two. Yeah. So here we go. <laughs> Jumping into like so here's what we do know and then we'll and then we'll listen. We know six point two inch front display. We know seven point six inch hole punch display inside. No more unsightly notch like the first generation and a new hinge system. Beyond that, everything is a mystery. But that seems like a lot already. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's good to have some mystery, uh, <laughs> especially when it comes to um, the folding, you know, phone yeah. arena. <laughs> Try to like For think sure. about that. It just doesn't sound natural. For sure. All right, so let's uh, let's start to listen and see uh, see what we're going to learn here. It's noticeably different. How much more you can see? And yes, we've heard you, Galaxy users wanted a widescreen experience that fit in the palm of their hand. The Z Fold 2 delivers seamless screen-to-screen transitions, so users can fluidly switch from the compact cover display to the wider main display without missing a beat. We're expanding the foldable experience on a wider Infinity-O display, one with thinner bezels and even more screen. And we're designing optimized large screen experiences so that you can truly take advantage of this expansive display. We will continue to extend this to even more apps to give users the unique benefits of this flexible, immersive smartphone. When we designed the original Fold, we had assumed that the act of closing the device meant that the user had probably finished whatever they were doing. But we heard that you wanted the option to go back and forth between the inner screen and the outer one. So we made that experience possible. Let's say a friend shares a YouTube video. You can start watching on the cover, and if you like what you're seeing, you can open up your phone to get a better look. But you and then, do that before, if you need you? to get moving, you can close the phone and keep watching on the go. Oh. The transition kind of is so interesting smooth. to me that that wasn't a feature this on the first one, one considering the they already kind of had the hand off going. Entirely new mobile experiences. Another is a fully hands-free experience called Flex Mode. The unique form factor of the Z Fold 2 makes it possible 
to use the fold without holding it in your hands and without the help of stands or accessories. We announced Flex Mode on the Galaxy Z Flip earlier this year. Okay. And now we're bringing it to the Z Fold 2. On the Z Fold 2, we made the hinge even stronger with sturdy elastics and an advanced cam mechanism that lets you unfold your phone at different angles. Check it out. The YouTube video is running on the front cover. I can prop it up so my hands are free. It's perfect for watching videos while multitasking. LG dual screen phones now, do this. Now, watch what happens yeah, when I turn the phone around the like this. Full screen. <laughs> See that? Right. The video automatically transitioned to the top of the screen here. And on the bottom, oh, I can okay, browse related nice. videos or leave comments, all without disrupting the video. Pull up now, the keyboard. you don't exactly. have to compromise. <laughs> Flex Samsung mode works keyboard. with a wide range of apps yeah. you use every day. Take Google Duo, for example. Like many of you, <laughs> I've been be duo for long. using video chatting to keep in touch <laughs> with my friends Good and family. Point. On the Z Fold 2, the screen is even larger than the Z Flip, giving me a wider display for my video calls. And on the bottom, I can control the call and even add more friends. It's a whole new way to experience connection, whether we're minutes or miles apart. And through our partnership with Google Duo, you can chat in full HD video, that's 1080p resolution with lightning fast 5G. Flex mode transforms your everyday experiences. It's a game changer for everything. Samsung's really going to need developer to um, support, yourself. right? And like Samsung they've got their partnerships obviously with the with Google, with one of the biggies. Um, but they're going to hopefully, I imagine, want other developers to kind of recognize the value of the dual screen, the unique dual screen approach of this device and uh, and code for it as well. I wonder how that how far that'll go or how that will translate to other devices as well. I don't know if it'll translate to other devices, but I know that Samsung is going to really support its developer community. They actually have a pretty robust developer community. I, I'm kind of surprised. Sometimes I forget. I forget about that until I, you know, find a watch app. <laughs> right. Suits my needs. Right. <laughs> They're talking the about the camera right now. Also helps that you interface get the best looked interesting. Possible video footage. It recognizes the subject of a video and optimizes a shooting frame. I was going to say, this is very focused shine. on video, if there are two which is in your very spot, much Samsung using what it's known for to, to sort of really sell this device. Frame. We have and pretty course, screens. We have good colors. Let's put it into a small package. Video yeah, right. Free. Yeah, their the screens are some of the best. A flexible, innovative camera experience, whether you're taking a photo with friends or snapping a selfie. It has two selfie cams. Lots of snapping on selfies in this day and age. And the other on the <laughs> main display. Galaxy users told us that when they wanted to take a high quality photo, they'd ask someone else to take the picture with the cameras on the back of the device. So we listened. Mm. Now you can use the high res cameras on the back of the Z Fold 2 to shoot a selfie using the cover display as a viewfinder. You no longer okay. have to ask friends or strangers to take your photo okay. to get high-res results. After all, when you can see your photos before you take them, you have a better shot at taking a better shot. With the Z Fold 2, you can even use both <laughs> <Yes>. screens <laughs> at the same time. Dual preview allows you and your subject to see the same preview through different displays. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows exactly how the shot will turn out before it's taken. With all of these different experiences, and they know whether they're in the, the Z Fold 2 not. is designed mm -hmm. to give you Although more Although it looked like the, the framing in both displays was a little the different. Fold was maybe for maybe I caught that wrong. You could be right. Like it was more like a square box on the front and, yeah. and a wide and on the inside. The same of their devices. Users who want a large screen experience on a smaller, more flexible form factor. Is that stock Winona Ryder? Multitaskers oh, who want to make the most. <laughs> out of every minute. I have times Old users who have told us that once they've experienced multitasking on a wide, flexible display, they can't go back to using a regular smartphone. You can already use up to three apps at once. The thing is, I want to know people who are true. I mean, I guess I try and multitask this way with picture in picture. We mm. even optimize the UI. So you can I mean, you know, it, reconfigure the window. I, I you know, I watch same. YouTube kind of, TV and in a little window and then I try and like, Answer email. 
be able to enjoy these enhancements Yeah, as I don't well. think to do that on device, but I suppose when you have a device that is, uh, is capable of giving you the expansive so space on both sides for both apps, maybe you think to do it more. Um, now you can it's just a, not a multitasking approach that I think of for mobile because we haven't had the ability to do it as the way we can now. And it's a very traditional desktop way of using yeah. something. That launches yeah. them all at once. For me, that's YouTube, Chrome, and Messages. You can rearrange the apps, and they will automatically adjust themselves to fit. And if you use a custom layout often, you can save it on an app's edge for immediate access. Uh, still pushing that app's oh, edge. Okay. We're reimagining mm -hmm. the entire But nice to be able to recall a uh, kind of like a custom layout. Yeah, I agree, layout. I agree. To the way you use it. Let's turn to the head of Samsung's customer experience office. You could Patrick do that for Schumann. work. You could have Slack in one window, right. your email in one window, and then, you know, Twitter in the big window. <laughs> right, right. The Galaxy Z series represents the culmination of over a decade of innovation. And our leadership in the foldable category is unparalleled. We believe it's the future of mobile technology. But a new form factor becomes meaningful only when it unlocks new user experiences. When we began designing our foldable series, we thought deeply about what people actually do with our devices and what the foldable could help them do even better. Viewing or creating photos and videos, using productivity applications, communicating with friends and family. With the extended screen of a tablet and the portability of a smartphone, foldable devices are poised to transform the experiences that matter most to our users. To make that possible, we need to start by defining and innovating those user experiences. That is what brings our products to life. Unique features of our Z series like app continuity, flex mode, multitasking, were all inspired by how we expected people to interact with this new foldable form factor. With our device, our user can enjoy a truly unique experience with their preferred apps and services. To deliver this, we have worked in close collaboration with our partners who share a common vision for the future of the foldable ecosystem to scale and optimize these services. In particular, we've worked very closely with our partners at Google to optimize apps for foldable devices running on Android. And we are and pleased Google's to already welcome working our friends on this from Google. Specifically for things Yoshi like this, baking it into Android 10 and Android 11. So all that hard work Hi, Patrick, comes to play here. I was just going to oh, say, Hiroshi. Hiroshi has talked about it, and look who appeared on screen. <laughs> so much has happened in this world since unpacked last February when I joined TM on stage to talk about the special Samsung Google partnership. Was that February? Was that this year? I hope the Samsung team and everyone tuning in I don't know, staying I've lost safe track. Well during this time. This is the third. Do you see the little Google uh, hat in the Starting background? With the the Google, yeah. Then Z Flip, and now the Z Fold 2. I really sense the momentum and learnings we're gaining with each iteration. I think foldables represent the future of the mobile category. I envision that one day these devices will be the norm because they offer such an immersive experience that fits in your pocket. It's a form factor that can revolutionize the way we communicate. Okay, had I known that content, Hiroshi loved this form factor, I feel like I would have asked him a little more about it. Are endless, and we're working hard to bring the best of Google innovation. He tweeted out a photo from this photo shoot, uh, I think it was like a week ago, and oh talked about gosh, having totally, a phone in My his algorithm did not serve that to me, <laughs> so I didn't yeah. see that. <laughs> I asked him what phone he had in his pocket, and he did not answer. With these flexible displays. The demos he you couldn't earlier, probably. He had no, to just ignore not. you. Of course not. Of course not. Of how we are <laughs> developing new ways people can seamlessly interact with foldable technology. I wanted to briefly talk about some of the product experiences that I'm most excited about. Yes, please First, tell us. First, with the Z Fold 2, I can watch my favorite YouTube videos uninterrupted as I open or close the device. The other day, I watched a cooking video and was amazed at how seamless the video moved from one display to the other. We've worked closely to make video calling as smooth as can be on the Z Fold 2. I really enjoy the crystal clear Google Duo video calls I can have with my friends and family using flex mode, completely hands-free. And you can truly multitask because the screen is so massive. Chrome and Maps, Photos and Gmail, interacting with your favorite because Google Because I know he's using this phone day to day. Really I know he's using this. With a mobile device. 
And yeah. let's not forget about 5G. He probably puts it to the test. Well, and, and, uh-huh. and rightfully so. I mean, Google has done a lot of work baking in uh, foldable support into their OS. They need to know intimately how their partners are utilizing that to make sure that they're covering the bases if they want to do it right. And if they truly believe that this is a form factor that is going to be, let's say, the next wave of, of the premium kind of market. I don't know if it's the next wave, but I definitely think that they are on the trajectory to kind of have it unlock more possibilities. You know what I mean? Mm, right. What does it open up? Exactly. No pun intended. I don't, yeah. Thank you, Hiroshi. Yeah. <laughs> I Samsung's didn't even think about that when I said that. With <laughs> it's early. It's okay. Yeah. And progress. We're pushing the edge of innovation and the mobile industry forward. All to give our consumers the trailblazing experiences. I tell you, these virtual events—they, I'm very, I've been provide. very impressed with how creative. Similarly, our partnership and close working companies, with Microsoft, TV channels, you know, like MTV had their virtual VMAs. Together. It was very, it's been very interesting to see this forced, new way of innovation. presenting. Yeah. yeah. To help you get things done with its cinematic display and intuitive multitasking capabilities. Let's say you get a last minute update while on the way to a meeting and you get an Excel sheet with a chart well, on the that way needs downstairs to go into your to presentation, <laughs> but you don't have enough yeah, time right. to go back to the office. With Z Fold 2, you can open Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint simultaneously from within yeah, the Yeah, I mean, this app. is really helpful to have that screen size to be able to do that stuff. Time. I for sure, this right here, but, and maybe that feels a little bit more palatable because we're already kind of exposed to Microsoft's kind of efforts on this front, and there's a well, lot of excitement. Well, I know that they've been working on it too, right? They've been working yeah. on the app, so it's optimized for this form factor. And it's convenient when checking emails too. Exactly. On a regular smartphone, you can only see your inbox, of course, is what we're talking or about. one specific email at a time. So I'd have to tap each message to read it. I want to say close it, this foldable form inbox. factor makes this stuff easier. It doesn't necessarily make this stuff new because I feel like I've done this with my phone before, but so just it's been a very cramped, frustrating right. experience when I have done and you get, it. You, you get used to it because it's just exactly. what you got. Yeah, but now they're saying you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to get, just get used to it anymore. <laughs> That's the beauty of the Z Fold 2. Simple convenience in a powerful, elegant package. And beauty is an integral part of the folding phone experience. We're I'm especially thrilled about again. our special edition Z Fold 2, created in partnership with our friend Tom Brown. This is our second time collaborating with Tom Brown. I really Brown want to know to this collab with phone. Tom Brown. They have mentioned yeah. this every event this year. Yes, I know, right? Technology meets refined design. Honestly, it wasn't really on my radar before the Samsung events. If the Z Fold 2 wasn't stylish enough, now we have this collab. Well, to that end, it is, a, from what I see in these renders, it does look like a really pretty phone. Like it's going to be like the last um, Comprised of the Z, Z, Z Flip. <laughs> Forgetting the right. names of these. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the it's Flip and the Fold. Oh my goodness. The premium lineup begins with the Z Fold 2. The phone embodies an iconic. <laughs> and make sure when you take everything out of the box, you do it slowly. <laughs> and the multicolored grain stripe. And then you caress the phone. <laughs> yes, because you paid how much for it again? <laughs> a flip cover for formal affairs. And a back cover for casual. I mean, I like I like this whole setup that they're attempting here, but I got to tell you, like from what I've seen of the Surface Duo, this is going to be the phone that's going to be compared, I think, to the Duo yes. in terms of multitasking features, foldable form factor. I think this is, you know, even though it's a slow year, I think this is the year that we're going to kind of get the kinks worked out on this form factor. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, this is the other when compared to the Surface Duo right now, because there has been a lot of excitement and attention being poured onto the Surface Duo and Samsung was there, you know, right, uh, to, you know, to give them props. They were there before most others doing this stuff. So they've learned some <laughs> yes, lessons. Yes, I remember. That, <laughs> that, that remember inevitably, the, you know, uh, even companies like Microsoft have benefited from. Wow, they really kind of give you a whole lot of, you got to really like this, uh, this collaboration in this, order to yeah, jump in here. Yeah, this aesthetic. You got to really lean into it. Yes, there you go. The aesthetic. 
because everybody's going to notice, holy cow, like all of your technology looks the same. Like wh what's going on with you? <laughs> what's going on here? Okay. But to be fair, my technology is all like pink and purple. So, <laughs> you know. Mm. <laughs> yes. But pink and purple, like hues of color is one thing when they all have the same signature, like, like, like three, lines three and, color. You know I mean? Yes. <laughs> then it's like, okay, you really thought about this. <laughs> But hey, I would like to see this in iridescent, like coloring, though. I think Samsung needs to add an iridescent lineup just for me. Yeah. Tom Brown edition. The Galaxy Z Fold 2 is packed full of innovations. It's a smartphone made for dreamers. I want to know, by the way, how much that camera bump sticks things. out compared to um, the Note we can't wait to see the 20 way you phones that you had in hand, because we were talking about that last week and all about Android. Which is why we offer Z Fold 2 in multiple Ultra. colors and custom hinge options. Custom really hinge options? Mm. Your own. Fancy. Okay. Your phone's color and Leaning into the style, which makes a whole lot of options. sense. This whole oh, round of of uh, devices that they announced a month ago or a little less than a month ago are all style. Like they're beautiful devices. This is a beautiful mm -hmm. phone and they're taking that design language over here and it makes perfect sense. Leather cover. You know, it's, it's really funny if you go on Instagram, you know, you can find like aesthetic photos on Instagram kind of thing in the, in the tags. And I often see like, you know, it's like girly tech or whatever, like really pink tech. And you always see the, the Galaxy Z Flip as like part of it, mm. which is just to add, they've made these, the phones they've released this year have been really, I mean, yeah, they've just been really pretty and just really covetable. So they just showed the pricing uh, information here, $1,999.99. Don't say $2,000, though. Uh, September 18th is the launch for the Galaxy Z Fold 2. Of course, they're talking right now about OS updates for three generations, which is, I think, just one of the one of the great pieces of news from Samsung this year. I think that's awesome. Oh, what did I miss? I missed the price on that. Was it 3200 for the, for Tom, the Tom Brown Tom edition, for everything, edition. limited. Thirty-two ninety-nine. Well, because you get the watch and you get the headphones oh, and you get all the accessories yeah. and the prestige. The pre yes, you get the prestige. That's a <laughs> that's it right there. Only possible with its unique foldable form. The Z Fold Two will empower you to do more and to be more, more productive, more creative more you we can't wait to see how your journey unfolds with it thank you yeah i had i had a feeling this would be a short one like what can you do like you can't spread out an hour on a single device or maybe you can but you don't certainly don't need to so thank you samsung for <laughs> sparing us an entire hour about a single device all right let's uh take a really quick break and thank the sponsor of uh this episode twit news that's last pass LastPass actually surveyed 700 IT and security professionals across a range of industries, from financial services to IT to retail. 82% say their business has been exposed to a risk due to poor identity and access management. This is a big deal. It is pervasive. Thankfully, LastPass can help you manage identities and promote good security behaviors while your employees are remote. Now, of course, you want your employees to have secure password storage and LastPass gives them their own vault for storing every app and web login that they use. LastPass makes it easy and safe for employees to uh, share logins uh, while keeping access to corporate data safe. Uh, single sign-on manages employee access in a centralized view. So IT thankfully always has insight into who has access to what and from where. Enterprise password management ensures oversight of shadow IT and enforceable policies across all password protected accounts. Uh, Multi-factor authentication, love that, have that on my LastPass account. It requires additional factors to prove a user's identity while the use of biometric and contextual factors actually uh, makes the process super smooth for employees. It's just like tap your finger and boom, there you go. You've got the keys to your kingdom. Employees always have their passwords with them. 
and they can gain access from anywhere, no matter where they are working from any device, working remotely should add convenience. It should not be frustrating uh, like it can be. And you can rest easy knowing that your business is secure with LastPass using AES-256 bit encryption with PBKDF2 SHH-256 and salted hashes uh, that ensure complete security in the cloud. Your data is encrypted and decrypted at the device level, so the data in your vault is secret from everyone, including LastPass. Uh, we use LastPass at Twit. We love it. I've been using LastPass since before we used it at Twit. Uh, I've got my wife on the on the LastPass train. It's just once you rely on this tool and this service, it's 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 difficult to think about not having it. Like having to remember my passwords and feel like I'm being safe and secure about it. Like it's just that seems like a, a big mountain to climb. Thankfully, I don't have to because I have LastPass. LastPass is the number one password manager. Let LastPass securely manage your user's identity, uh, letting your employees work efficiently without making your business vulnerable to cyber threats. Go to lastpass.com slash twit. That's lastpass.com slash twit. We thank them for their support of Twit News. We're going to continue talking about what we just saw with Samsung. Um, yeah, okay. So we knew the major things. We already knew about the display and the no notch and the fact that it had a new hinge system really seems like this event was about kind of illustrating why, the why and also making a lot of kind of comparisons, either direct or indirect, to the Microsoft Surface Duo, which it has, like we've talked about, had a lot, you know, been getting a lot of attention uh, to make this a productivity device to go toe to toe with what Microsoft is going to be releasing uh, in a couple of months. Are you intrigued? Does this kind of pull you towards the... Uh, the, the foldable phone uh, layout. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it does. You know, because, it, and I've been using the LG variants of these like dual screen devices and it's not the same thing because they're not foldable uh, displays, but it kind of gives idea to, it gives credence to that idea of like multitasking on two screens. And I don't know if we have an ecosystem of apps that responds to it. I think it's a little more exciting. And for some reason, it's more exciting the second time around than it was the first time. Mm -hmm. I, the first time uh, the first time that Samsung did this, because I feel like the first time it did that, it, obviously, it was very mired in some really negative experiences. Yeah, um, to say the but least. But I think <laughs> that needed to happen. And Samsung, I think, is actually really lucky that they got to do that without really facing competition that year. Yeah, it's interesting because yeah. as you mentioned that, like my mind jumps to another, you know, uh, situation that Samsung had to navigate through. And that was, was that the Note 7 uh, yeah. with the batteries exploding and everything like that? And both times, man, when we were in the middle of, uh, in the midst of all of that stuff, it felt like such a big deal to potentially to Samsung's business and their reputation and everything. <laughs> but Samsung has really proven that they know how to navigate through and out of uh, potentially disastrous uh, situations like that. Uh, their phones are, are wildly respected. Um, I mean, when you're talking about Android devices worldwide, Samsung phones for most, you know, for many people that defines Android. So it's, you know, Samsung's uh, reputation hasn't diminished because of these things and actually kind of touching on what you said, maybe it, it makes them stronger. It makes them a stronger competitor because they realize, you know, through all of that pain and then all the effort to kind of write the ship, uh, what it takes to create a device that, uh, that really appeals to all aspects, including just being dependable and, you know, not letting dust get in under the display and that sort of stuff. It's like they take the lumps for everyone else. And as a result, they learn a lot for themselves and their business. Well, and plus they have the fans and the R&D to be able to kind of do that. And I think that yeah. we're seeing the fruits of that labor this year. I mean, the flip was really popular. It was a popular form factor. People really went wild over it. And, you know, that was pre, listen, I'm saying it, it was pre pandemic. And so people were really excited about it. And, um, I have a feeling people are going to be, this is the, the end of this year is about the foldable. We've got the duo. Mm. We've already got the flip existing. Now we've got the new fold. And actually, if you're looking at that price tag, I hate to say it. It's really not that much more <laughs> than some of the other flagships out mm. there. 
So if yeah, you wanted to take a chance, you could. Take a chance with me. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to take yeah. an ABBA chance. <laughs> right. <laughs> ABBA edition. Um, yeah, that's true. I mean, 1999.99 is pretty close to 1449, which is, I think, off the top of my head, what the Note 20 Ultra is. Um, you know, it's it's right around. It's all relative now to me. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, five hundred dollars is five hundred dollars. That's a, that's a, a lot of extra money to to throw into a device. But I think the person who is really attracted to this understands that and can make way for that. Um, I, I like I I'm of two minds of this. Like I realize now is is a time where foldables are kind of like proving their proving their worth and kind of saying, Hey, see, we've been working for on this for a while. We have something to, uh, to show you and we know that you'll like it. The flip side to that is it, now this moment is just very different. And, um, you know, so what, what are the sales going to be on a device like this? Is there enough appeal to the people who really want to get a device like this for multitasking and everything to spend $2,000 when, Money for a lot of people is really hard to come by right now, and um, I don't know the answer to that. I guess we'll we'll find out as as uh, this holiday season hits. You know how these these fold these premium foldable devices have they been able to attract people enough in this time this difficult time to pull out that money and shell out for it anyways? And if so, why? What was the thing that pulled them closer to it? I mean, it's a beautiful device, and and it certainly does so much. Uh, so I love what they're what they're doing here. I'd be really curious to see how successful it is for Samsung. I don't know if it's going to be a successful financial endeavor. Just again, be I feel like Samsung, Microsoft, they know that this is just the R and D portion of putting out this device, and part of the R and D is getting people out in the world who want to buy this to get their hands on it and just sort of like pay attention to them. I have a feeling Mm. this category is going to go down in price in a while. And so I'm looking forward to that. You know, it's kind of like the high end tablet back in the day. It used to be very expensive to get a high end tablet. And now you can get a pretty good performance device just because it's a lot more, you know, a lot more people have adopted it. And so the more people adopt mm-hmm. it, right, you know, the whole economics thing. Um, yeah, become more of a commodity. But, I mean, you're right. $2,000 is a lot for a phone that is not a computer, for instance, you know, a laptop. Mm. I would think of spending that much um, on a computer, on an all-encompassing. But, but I really... Uh, it sucks that I really like this form factor because I absolutely cannot afford it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to play with it so badly. Like I, yeah, I really do. Um, but at the same time, this is not a good, listen, it's not a good time to put out a productivity device because <laughs> no one's yeah, going well, anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Our needs for productivity are are definitely all over the map right now. You know, some people are, are working their, you know, a, they're working something that is somewhat closer to what it was eight months ago, let's say. But a lot of a lot of people, I know myself included, I'm spending a lot of time in this house. Do I need an all-in-one device that I can put into my pocket so it's with me everywhere? That type yeah, of yeah, we're not on a train. Not, not you know, really. We're not. Like, I don't need that. But that's why this is a good time to kind of release this because everything is so slow. Because you can do, you know, kind of test the waters and see how it goes. And plus. And I said this with the Surface Duo. Now that we have these devices, development will happen. Development of apps. Um, maybe even yeah. I would love to see some sort of push to get more independent developers. Um, maybe people who have really popular like Android productivity apps that you know maybe aren't mm-hmm. backed by these big companies, but that the community loves. That should be Google's. Uh, I feel like that's what Google should really pursue. I feel like they should go out to the indie, you know, small time developers and say, hey, we'll help you optimize for the foldable display so that you can get, you know, you can kind of use that in your in your feature set. Ah, foldable display it's, compatibility, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's definitely an opportunity for developers to differentiate if they if they do the hard work early on, then they stand the um the chance of riding that wave as exactly. it continues on 
And that that means money for developers if they can do and that, that right. Me wanting to use this platform more because as exciting mm. as it is to have Microsoft apps compatible with this, um, I you know I don't work for an organization. I'm a I'm an independent uh, worker, so to speak, and so I rely actually on a lot of these small time apps, you know, a yeah. lot of freemium apps to really like get the work done. And so I want to you know I really want that developer support to come through. I think that would really help. Yeah. And as I'm looking kind of through um, through specs and everything like that, I, I have to give Samsung credit for delivering a foldable. Yes, it's expensive, but they're giving you specs to match that expense. Like and not and it's not just the fact that it is foldable and that's what you're paying for, because I feel like some of the foldables that we've seen so far have kind of felt like that. It's like, well, it's foldable. Never mind that it's got last year's processor and, you know, this, this and this or whatever. Samsung are you, is are saying, you subtweeting no. the duo? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just well, I mean, that's that's just one example. But I feel like there have been a few, you know, the Motorola Razor is another one. It was like, oh, well, that's wow, neat. I that's really cool, except it's really mid range. You know, and Samsung is saying, no, if you want foldable, if you want cutting edge, then you want it all and we'll deliver it to you with this, with the uh, Galaxy here's, Z Fold 2. OK, so here's the thing now, since we're in this discussion, um, tablets in the Android world have sort of fizzled out. It really is um, up to a few manufacturers and a yeah. lot of them are really into the budget tablet category. And so you know that you, what you can find there. And you know, if you want a premium tablet, you go to Samsung, right? And you spend that money. I would love to see the diversification of the foldable form factor among the manufacturers. So let's have Motorola come in with like a foldable, you know, G series, for instance, something mm -hmm. that's affordable for the status quo. You know, I totally. want a foldable phone, but I don't necessarily care about Maybe I don't really care about the camera as much as having, you know, as I would on a on a Samsung device. I think that would be I think that would be fun. Actually, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd be into yeah. that. And uh, I could see myself buying something that is more affordable from a manufacturer that I trust. But again, we really need developer support for that to happen. Yeah, so. indeed. And um I think Google's is doing what it can to kind of uh, entice developers or at least build in the 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 playing pieces to that into the Android development ecosystem. Do you think we um, would have seen that at Google I.O. this year if we would have gone? More developer um, kind of communication. Even just a booth. Even in. just a booth that was like, maybe oh, yeah. that's multiple devices, you know? Abs yeah, I, I definitely think that we would have seen some sort of focus on foldables. Google has, you know, Google has made it clear that they're, they are addressing the uh, unique challenges that foldables present to the ecosystem with, in, inside of the OS so that, you know, OEMs don't have to do it on their own and pave their own way. Google really wants to kind of unify this whole approach so that it is easier for developers. So absolutely, I think they probably would have had some sort of focus on it um, at Google I.O. I don't know what that would have looked like. But of course, tier Google I.O. did not happen this year. Uh, so along to with that Overwatch, end... Samsung, I'm sort of thinking about, uh, shoot, I had the pulse and something and now it just completely escapes me. This is what happens when it's 730 in the morning exactly. and I'm only halfway through my more coffee. coffee. Um, <laughs> it's okay, Flo. <laughs> oh, I, I remember now. Samsung Dex. There was no yeah. mention of that. I feel like if you're talking about productivity from a Samsung scope, you would have to mention Dex because they are putting so much firepower into that. And I was kind of surprised, you know, didn't really see anything about that in well, this little I, presentation. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I can almost guarantee you that there's Dex support in here. I can do a quick search to see. I haven't found anything on it yet, but I can almost guarantee you that there is Dex support here. And probably it does the wireless Dex that um, we get out mm -hmm. of the latest mm -hmm. Note series, which, by the way, works on my Samsung TV. It's like the easiest thing in the world. It's actually really wow. cool. Um, I didn't have to do any setup or anything. I just like went into quick settings, turned That's on Dex. That's the thing about the Samsung devices, by the way, is yeah. that they really created their own ecosystem and we never talk about it. Yeah. But we probably should because 
everybody has a Samsung you have the TV. devices, it's really convenient. In an, in, exactly. And I hate to like have Apple be the example, but in an Apple way, because Apple has been very uh, successful at doing this too. 100%. My point though was that, yes, that probably has DeX. My guess is emphasizing that on a device that is already about a different style of productivity might maybe detract from the unique True. aspects of multitasking True. on this device that they really want to focus on. You know what I mean? They, they want to say yeah. like, this is how you multitask on this device. And yeah, sure, it does that other stuff too. It does decks, of course, but this is why you're going to get it. Um, that would be my that would be my guess anyways, because yeah. maybe that muddies the water. Then it's like, well, wait a minute, does it do decks mode when it's unfolded or blah, blah, blah? I don't know, but yeah. I don't know. It's I'm very curious to see... I, Look, I know this is about the foldable phone, but just as a side note for Dex, I'm very curious to see how they build it out. Yeah. I mean, imagine some sort of dual boot Dex situation on the Samsung Dex. Chromebooks. I don't know. I'm thinking kind of far, but. It'd be kind of neat. Actually, now that I think about it, it'd be kind of neat to have a little like, a, well, but, it, you know, it's really meant for like a larger screen. That's that's really what I its know. point is. And I so then know. putting it on like the top half of the Z Fold 2 and have the bottom half be a keyboard to kind of like simulate a desktop experience probably wouldn't work too too well unless it's scaled appropriately. And then you're like, well, why am I doing this anyways? I'm already on my mobile phone where it's already scaled perfectly for the mobile phone. So, yeah, but it would be an interesting experience, uh, experiment. I feel like uh, we any should final talk thoughts? about, oh, oh sorry. sorry. No, <laughs> what, no, 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 it's all good. What do you want to talk about? The keyboard, the keyboard situations. Yeah. So like kind of folding listen, out and having a keyboard down there, that sort of thing. Yes. Yeah, so listen, I've tried this on the the LG V60. I've tried this on the LG Velvet. I don't like it, um, even with yeah. the LG keyboard app. And so I'm very curious to see, you know, is is it just the Samsung keyboard? When are we going to have, by the way, this dual screen compatibility with the Gboard, with the Google keyboard? Mm. That's kind of what I want to know going forward. What are these you little things that are being done to kind of help me get more usability out of this form factor? You, you aren't going to want that. You're going to be so enraptured by Samsung's keyboard that's down there that you're not even going to think of Gboard again. That's going to be like become like a bad word to you. A lot of people do like the Samsung keyboard, which yeah, that's fine. But I've yeah. really invested yeah, everybody's in Gboard. Different. <laughs> So everybody's different. I'm not a huge fan of the Samsung keyboard. I kept it on for my time with the Note 20 uh, Ultra just because I do that with Samsung phones, try and yeah, kind of like of live with their defaults and everything. And that's one of them that I have a really hard time with personally. Yep, I but. agree. Well, I guess uh, at this point. Yeah. What do you think? Going to get one? Well, no, because <laughs> this is not the year for me to get any yeah. big purchases. Um but I really, I really want to try this out. I really want to try the Surface Duo. I really want to just live in this form factor for a bit and really experience it and yeah. give it another chance. I think give it maybe a Samsung was a little early last year with uh, the Fold, but it probably, <laughs> in you know hindsight, is twenty twenty right? Looking yeah. back probably did them well to have that little mess up and kind of fumble a bit because I feel a lot more uh, optimistic about this second generation. It enabled them to fit, to address some very serious issues with foldables in general a year earlier than maybe they, they would have potentially. You know what I mean? Like they, they were forced to do it with that iteration instead of like to allow it to make another mistake with another device and, and draw it out. Um, so, yeah, I think you're right. I think they learned what a did, lot in that, and that's going to serve them well. What did uh, I think Ron said it last week on All About Android? He said something about if you know, if you wait too long to like ship a product, then if you wait until a product is perfect to ship it, then you've waited, you too, waited long. too long. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And I yeah. feel like with Samsung, you know, they were like, we're first last year, and now they're like, we're first with the <laughs> second generation, and look, we made it better. <laughs> Yeah, so. exactly. And you can't, you can't deny this is a pretty slick phone. Yeah. Who knew, Indeed. who knew that this would be the year that we would just be getting dual screened devices. Like I, I was not anticipating that this year, but didn't have that on your bingo card. 
No, I did not. <laughs> Galaxy Z Fold 2 launching September 18th, $1,999.99. It's okay if you say $2,000, so I won't ding you for that. A um, whole lot to dive into there when it when it launches. Guaranteed, we're going to be seeing a whole lot of comparisons to the Surface Duo. And uh, yeah, I don't know that there's a, a whole lot more to say about that. I mean, they, you know, they talked a lot about app uh, app functionality and everything, but um, really, it just this is a cutting edge of uh, Samsung device, and uh, it's going to be. I'm going to be very curious to see how it performs and. What when people use it, you know, what are the strengths and what are the things that people ding it for? Does the display on the inside still feel kind of plasticky and and weird, or are we over that? I, I don't even know. I haven't had a chance to to experience that on my own, but uh, still some unanswered questions, I suppose. But we're not going to have to wait very long. Se- September eighteenth is right around the corner. It is, and uh, yeah, exciting stuff. Flo, uh, thank exciting. you so much for uh, for waking up early this morning to talk about this uh, this device with me. I appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really looking forward to. Man, this is good. We we needed this. We needed some things to kind of <laughs> you know distract us from everything, and this is, this is a sure. good distraction. <laughs> Florence Ion, uh, of course, uh, you know, co-host on All About Android. What do you want people to know about what you're doing, where they can find you, all that stuff? Hey, you can check me out at florenceion.com. That's my website. Uh, and I'm on Twitter at oh, that's flow if you want to, you know, musings. <laughs> Excellent. Right on. Thank you, Flo. Have a good rest of your Thank day. And you, I'll see Jason. you tonight on All About Android. Yes, that's right. Uh, I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching and getting up early with us. If you're watching live, of course, if you're not watching live, you can always find our news at twit.tv slash news. That will take you right to our Twit News feed, uh, where you can see all of our live events and uh, not miss them. Of course, these live events, when we do this, it you know this isn't just watching the event and with volume full up. This is all about the commentary as well. It's why we bring awesome people like Flo on uh, to talk through it so that we can share our perspectives on it as well. So we hope that you enjoy it. Uh, thanks, A big thanks to John in the studio for also waking up early and pushing the buttons to make this happen. And thanks to you for watching and listening. Subscribe, and we will see you guys next time on Twit News. Take care, everybody.